I saw something on Twitter, I think, from Entice. And it says AOTC mount available on trading post. As first reported by Wowhead, it looks as if the Wow team will be adding a former AOTC mount to the trading post. The mount has been data mined as the Korokron Warwolf, which was granted for obtaining AOTC back in MOP for defeating Garish Hellscream. This will mark the first previously unobtainable AOTC mount to make its way into the trading post. This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. This is really, really bad. Really bad look for Blizzard. Really bad. Why is it really bad? Is it because of the mount? No, it doesn't matter. The mount doesn't matter at all. What matters is the philosophy of trading short-term satisfaction for a long-term outlook for the future and the health of World of Warcraft as a game. If you continually trade the long run of the, the trust and the excitement of your players to play the game to get things that are unobtainable in the future with short-term satisfaction of, here, look at this new shiny thing that you can now get, your game will succeed in the short term, but it will die in the long run. Blizzard, please. Stop trading long-term satisfaction for short-term shiny objects. It is ruining the game over and over again. Please do not do this. This is not a good look at all. It has nothing to do with the mount itself. It has everything to do with the philosophy of trading the long-term grind, the long-term outlook of the game, the trust of the players with a short-term, here you go. Like it's, it's really infuriating, really infuriating, really bad. Unbelievable. I'm not signed into Twitter. One sec. Uh, I have to like put my verification code in it. One sec. Two factor authentication. All right, we're in. Yeah, like I said, absolute trash. I've never seen Zara this mad. Well, why do you think I'm mad? It's passion. I care. Being angry or upset at something means that you care about something that went really wrong. And I think in this case for Blizzard, this is not a good move. This is not a good move for the longevity of World of Warcraft. It's like a kick in the nuts to anyone who's been playing the, the game long term and understands things in, in the micro at in the macro. It's like this is clearly really bad. Yeah, I don't know. Is AOTC hard enough to justify never adding it again? What? It has nothing to do with how hard AOTC is and everything to do with the respect of the player's time. If AOTC gives you mounts that are going away forever, then they should go away forever. If AOTC gives you mounts that are in the game obtainable from other means, then make AOTC give you a mount that's obtainable through other means. But if you're just giving people mounts that are from unobtainable measures, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. It has nothing to do with how hard it is. There is no argument there. He's baiting you. I know. I know. Like, this is, this is super, super, super not, not a good look. Not a good look for Blizzard. Not a good look. I think they should revert this. Absolutely. Sorry, guys. This was a bad call. We're not going to give uh, unobtainable mounts from the trading post. We don't want to kick our players in the nuts. We want you to continue playing the game in the long term. And doing something like this is, uh, was not the right call. Sorry, Blizzard. There we go. What would you do if they recolored it? In my opinion, come out with a brand new mount. A recolor though, fine, a little bit better. The same exact mount, same color, same name, not fine at all. Yeah. Make an X video reply. 
Taylor. <laughs> uh, nobody cares about TCG mounts or store mounts. Any mount you can buy with money has zero value. Yeah, I mean, eventually it, it'll be that way, right? It's uh, it's the same thing that happened to the Blazing Hippogriff or... Um, that, what was it? Was it the Blazing Hippogriff? I think it was. Or was there another TCG mount that they did? Um, there's a couple of them. Oh, the Feldrake is the one I was thinking of. The Feldrake. It's the same thing that happened to Feldrake. It was a really cool mount that was very rare. You give it away for Twitch drops or was it Twitch drops or something else? Was it just a Twitch Prime thing or a, a Amazon Prime thing? Anyway, you everyone has the Feldrake and, and now now it becomes like everyone has it. Once again, it's a short-term shiny object that kicks the nuts of the game in the long term and the players. It's a big middle finger to everybody, but it's a quick short-term satisfaction thing that people care about for literally like 14 seconds. And then as you play the game for many more weeks or many more months, it's not shiny anymore. And then it sucks ass. You never see Feldrake giving away a mount effectively kills the mount. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Retail's been dead for years. It's a money printing machine now and they have uh, politicians pretending that the next expansion will be better. I mean, I don't think retail would be dead if they didn't continually offer short-term satisfaction for the health of the long-term game. That's my point. That's why it's infuriating. Like if, if someone wants the best for retail, it's like, okay, the best for retail would be starting to make decisions that help the game five years from now instead of helping the game five seconds from now and then hurting the game 10 seconds from now, right? It's like, it's like self-explanatory. Think about it with like health and fitness. If you want to better yourself five years from now, what are you gonna start doing? Well, maybe starting taking care of your diet, start to exercise more, start to um, think about the long term and start prioritizing those things so that five years down the road, you're not completely screwed. 10 years, 15 years. And I feel like Blizzard's kind of just throwing away the long term with moves like this. It doesn't make any sense to me. People have been saying the game is dead for 15 years. Yeah, I think, I think we're gonna see World of Warcraft persists for a very, very long time. Um, seems that way, at least. But the question is how many people are going to be playing, because I don't think it's going to go to zero anytime soon. Instant gratification culture, that's just what today's times are about. I know, it's really frustrating. It's really, it's really frustrating. I, um, I've always been wired the opposite, so when I see that, it's just like, what the hell is going on? What the hell is happening? WoW will never go under a 200k player base. You're probably right. People have invested so much time and the game has hit such critical mass that even if people are constantly quitting, there's going to be new people that haven't played in 10 years that are constantly coming back. And like, look at RuneScape. It's a little bit older with still like a, a really solid player base on OSR. So you're probably right to some degree. Bloomberg reports new Blizzard president is Johanna Ferries. Okay, so we have a new Blizzard president. Welcome, Johanna. Wait, who, who's Johanna? W posted one Wow, you guys are fast. Really, really fast. Who is Johanna Ferries? Do we know who this is? Uh, in a new article by Jason and Dina, Bloomberg reports the new Blizzard president that we were supposed to find out this week, and we found out Monday, it's pretty good, is Johanna Ferries. She used to work at the NFL, the speed leveler. Is this, no, this isn't Johanna, the speed leveler, right? She's the former COD League GM. Uh, do people generally think she did a good job with Call of Duty League or not? Oh, it's a, it's a dude? Johanna is a dude. Okay, I, my bad. I assumed Johanna. Okay, never mind. Uh, Bloomberg has reported that Blizzard Entertainment has chosen their next president as Johanna Ferries, which, by the way, should we just do a quick Google search here? Um, no, it is. How do I turn this? I'm, all right, I'm turning my stream off. I'll be back tomorrow. You guys are so troll. All right, uh, Johanna Ferries on X. Bro, on X just sounds not good. 
Like, we, we got to go back to Twitter, man. Like, on X? Really? Johanna on X? Like, that... Okay. Where was I? Oh, yeah, I was trying to find the Twitter, right? Or the, the X. Okay. Ferris worked for the NFL for over a decade before joining Activision in 2018 as Call of Duty Esports Commissioner. Wait, so she has experience with esports. Maybe WoW Esports is going to 10x under Johanna. That could be good. I don't know. The person who runs COD now runs Blizzard. All right, hold on. I don't know. I'm not familiar with Johanna. For those of you familiar, is Johanna a W or an L? I, I don't know. Do people like Johanna? Has she done good things with Call of Duty? Um, I haven't seen a single W yet. Maybe it's... Let's just give it more time. Just keep voting, guys. L, 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 I saw a W. I saw... Okay. Maybe there's good to come. All right. I'm an optimist. I hope this is going to be awesome. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Um... Interesting. Ferris, who pre uh, was previously a general manager for Call of Duty franchise at Activision, will succeed Mike Yabara, who left the company last week amid mass layoffs. Ferris started at Activision in 2019 as a head Call of Duty esports, and she previously spent 12 years working at the National Football League. Full article on Bloomberg. Page not found. Oh, come on! Okay. Well, there we go, guys. The, the biggest question to me, and I don't, I don't know if this is necessarily the right question, but like maybe this is more of an emotional side of me speaking. Oh, maybe this link works. Oh, it does. Cool. Is how long has she played WoW or Blizzard games? That's, I mean, that's kind of what I care. Like, I, I mean, I, I want you to have a really good extensive knowledge on how to lead a, a business and a company. And that's, that's great. But also in order to do so properly, I think having an intimate connection with the games themselves is a critical component to move up the ladder, right? How long have you played Blizzard games? If she's a massive WoW fan, you know, uh, OG StarCraft gamer, whatever, has played Blizzard games her whole life and knows how to simultaneously run a company, I think it's a massive win. If she's never played games in her life and knows how to run a business, I, I, I don't know if the proper decision-making skills will be there if you haven't seen it at ground level, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily want to hate but I just, my, my question is, how long has she played Blizzard games? That's it. How, how, long, how long has she uh, been a gamer for? How long has she played Blizzard titles? And what's the, the goal? Like, maybe there'll be a press conference and she'll, she'll say a few words about uh, her plans, her intentions moving forward, her history, stuff like that. Yeah. Is there a, okay. Oh, so this is an email from Johanna Ferries to the to the to the new president. Oh wait, the following email was delivered to all employees by Johanna. Okay, so this is Johanna. Okay, maybe we'll get some backstory here on what she plans to do or, or something like that, or some of her uh, her experience in the past. Okay, dear Blizzard, though my official first day with you all is February fifth, I want to let you know immediately that it's an honor to join you next week in this new capacity. I do so humbly and in awe of all that Blizzard has stood for and delivered to the world for over thirty years. Today also brings some mixed emotions. The loss of talented teammates in recent days is hard to hold side by side with the immense excitement I feel about joining Blizzard and building on the momentum you've created for Blizzard's next chapter. I want to thank Matt for the introduction, bring some further clarity to today's announcement, and share about how I see our future together at Blizzard. I understand it's a, it's a lot to take in. I thought it said hot take. <laughs> the news and the appointment may no doubt bring up a range of reactions, questions, even concerns. Activision Blizzard and King are decidedly different companies with distinct games, cultures, and communities. It is important to note that Call of Duty's way of waking up in the morning to deliver for players can often differ from the stunning games in Blizzard's realm, each with different gameplay experiences. Communities that surround them in requisite models of success. I've discussed this with Blizzard's leadership team, and I'm okay. Walking in this global sensitivity to these dynamics and deep respect. Okay, I'm curious on the goals and her past. I'm experienced uh, and her like experience with with gaming. 
Um, I'm committed to doing everything I can to help Blizzard thrive with care and consideration, of course, uh, each unique and special in their own right. I'm optimistic to serve. Okay, great polish and creative master. Okay, perfect. Next week, I'll be in Irvine. I'm eager to connect with as many as you as possible. I'll be scheduling informal and totally optional meet and greets where I want to hear more from people across the org. Okay, great. Shake their hand. Say hi. A few personal facts about me. Great. Okay, here we go. We got to, got to the juice. My number one job in life is raising two amazing boys. Okay, perfect. Uh, I mean, as a new father, I can totally see how that becomes the number one job. I really can. Um, in addition to parenthood, a typical week for me includes uh, time for daily yoga. Yo, me too. Okay. Um, and prayer. Hey, me too. Okay. I like Johanna. And of course, playing video games. Big Diablo 4 fan over here. Okay. So, um, she plays Diablo 4. Big fan. How long have you played? Have you beaten the game? Have you played hardcore? Have you played WoW? Have, what about StarCraft? What about all these different things, right? Um, is it, like, sometimes when people say, like, how do I say this without sounding really pretentious? Um, I remember back in high school when there was, like, a gaming club. Oh, man, maybe, maybe I am, maybe I'm an asshole. I just remember like seeing other people play video games and like I'm over here like in college with like multiple rank one titles or like gladiators and this and that and like people are, like let's play oh yeah I'm a big wow fan and I'm like oh yeah what level are you and it's like well I never made it to max level and it's like okay so you've played wow but you haven't really played wow I'm curious here what big Diablo 4 fan means is it I'm a big Diablo 4 fan. I've played. Or have you played Diablo 4? You see what I'm saying? Am I an asshole? Maybe I'm an asshole. Maybe I'm a little elitist, but you guys know what I'm saying, right? If someone's going to lead a company, you want them to play the game, not just play the game. Does that make sense? Good take? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, I'm, I'm trying to say in the no most non-elitist asshole way possible i'm trying to just say there's a difference between somebody playing a game every now and then and like living it for a long time and then really understanding the intricate like networks that it takes and the intricacies of developing that game at the highest level it's different it just is it just is i'm sorry if that sounds a little bit elitist it just is all right Throughout the joy I find in games and working on those who make them only deepens. I remain inspired by Blizzard's iconic legacy and the transformative role gaming. This is a role play gaming has played in my life and the other and the lives of others. I cannot wait to get going to listen, to learn, to empower and collaborate with all of you in the bold and future. Okay. Honestly, like once again, I'm an optimist. I'm excited to see what she does. You know, I don't I like I don't want to uh, immediately hate. Maybe this is going to be a great thing. But I, I must say deep down inside, I think a company is probably best led by somebody who has been at the ground level and really understands the inner workings of those things. And uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I would like to learn more about her past as a gamer, it's specifically with Blizzard games, more than just big D4 fan right um yeah that's pretty much where my my head's at there cool well thanks for linking this yeah cool snuts for president uh maybe like here's the thing for someone to lead you they want to be able to have the the business skills to to lead but you also want to have the gaming skills if you just have if you're a really good gamer it doesn't mean you can lead a company and if you can lead a company, it doesn't necessarily mean you can lead a gaming company that you've never played the game of, right? Like you want to probably have both. So I wouldn't necessarily go and hire the best gamer, let's say Snuts, to lead a company. But instead, I would hire someone that really has put their feet in the sand and understands how to run a business, and right? And, and that would make more sense. But I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, you don't hire gamers at all? I mean, you could. I have zero. Here, let's just do... Put the WoW music in the background. This chick knows nothing about WoW, their flagship product. Well, so yeah, you're, you're probably right. But I would like to know if that is 
necessarily true. Has she played WoW? Maybe she has. I don't, I don't know. There we go. We just had, I, I logged into WoW just for the WoW music. Perfect. Uh, so man, how's your day? Uh, it's going well. Uh, I, we have, we have a new president, Johan Johanna Ferries, president of Blizzard. She would have said if she played, um, that, that's probably true. That's probably true. If she played WoW, there probably would have been a mention of WoW. Um, yeah. Yeah. Folks really want for others to enjoy things in the exact uh, same way they do. What do you mean by that? Also from a president, Pop, President Pop, how much influence do they even have for WoW decisions? There's many leaders and teams. Yeah, but that doesn't mean the leader is completely useless, but I see your point. It's not that one, it's like the president for the United States isn't making every small micro decision, but it still matters to some degree. And yeah, the president of Blizzard Entertainment isn't going to be making all the micro decisions that we're necessarily going to live with day to day, but it's still relevant. It's still worth the conversation. Zalicious, thanks for the prime. Are you thinking W or L or unsure? W, L or unsure? I'll go with I'll go with unsure. I'll give I'll give her that unsure. I mean we don't know we don't know. We're in the mid we're mid we're mid. I I don't know if I can say W necessarily, but like you know I don't know. Maybe she's a nice lady. Well maybe she'll do a press conference. We can hear her talk and her excitement and her 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 authentic passion might shine through. I I I, I don't know. Didn't Call of Duty get worse under her? So she's been at Call of Duty since 2018. Has Call of Duty gone up or down since 2018? Probably down, huh? Well, we don't want to judge a book by its cover. Time will tell. Stay tuned. Have you seen how ridiculous and out of the clown town COD skins have become? Uh, I haven't been very closely um, in tune with like the pulse check of the COD community in quite some time. I've played back in high school. I love Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare 2, played a bit of Zombies, thought it was great. Since then, I haven't played too much, um, to be completely honest with you. But Blizzard is re-releasing an AOTC mount as one of their new skins, so didn't we all? Yeah, but the difference is uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't lose to anyone in the chat in a 1v1 quick scopes only on Rust. Not a single one of you could take me down in a 1v1 on Rust. I can guarantee that personally.